Hey guys, Levi Gates for the Rag Company, and welcome back to Detox. With me, the man of the hour, Mr. Ivan LaCroix. How's it going, brother? Great yourself. Oh, I'm just a jazz to have you here. I enjoy these weeks where you get to come and hang out. It's been too long. Exactly. It so, has. I'm thankful you're here. So am I. <laughs> well, we've had some fun. Uh, we were uh, working on a shoot. We had yep. a stuck sprayer, and it took us a while, and we got it cleaned, and then it got stuck, and then it got it cleaned, and it got stuck. So we just got another one. Right. But we made a joke. You made a joke. <laughs> yeah. That it probably cost us about a hundred dollars uh, to fix that sprayer between the two of us trying to work on it uh, in For that a 50 time. Fifty-cent sprayer. Yeah. Yeah. So one of this this topic is basically uh, calculating your hourly costs or your hourly wage for the exactly. company as yeah. to how that's going to work. And with I remember when I had my shop, that was always a you know one a big issue because everybody needs to figure out. Uh, you know, guys go, oh, I'll just go detail a car and I'll make some money. Yeah. But you've got a lot of different things you need to watch out for. And not everybody can just go detail a car for 20 hours and make a hundred bucks. No. You're not making any money. Exactly. And, you know, at that point, you might as well just go work flipping burgers or doing something else. So yeah. um, the key, and you always preach this, is efficiency. That's one of the keys, yeah. But not only being efficient in detailing, but being efficient in how you spend save, utilize, all the, all How the things that go How you run your in. business. Yeah. You know, a detailers, and it's getting better, but I remember MTE 15 years ago. You'd have a clinic on, an education clinic at MTE on running the business. There'd be five detailers sitting in the room. You'd yeah. have another one on which polish to choose for jeweling your paint, and it would be standing room only. And Fortunately, that is changing around. The IDA has helped a lot in educating detailers to be more business oriented. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're doing our part and there's a lot of people out there doing yeah. their part as well. So the older uh, generation, we're trying to get the younger generation to be more in tune with running a business, being a business owner, not just a passionate detailer. Yeah. And part of that is knowing what it costs you per hour. And a lot of people don't know that. And I always ask people, you know, if your employee screws around for five minutes, how much does it cost you? And I normally get, oh, it costs me like two bucks. Yeah. No, it costs you probably $20 for that five minutes. And then they, whoa, how come? Because people don't realize that it's not what you're paying your employee, it's what your employee could have gained you. Yeah. And as detailers, we should be making roughly about $100 an hour we should be billing about a hundred dollars an hour and a lot of people are scared of that number yeah to say the least uh, but if you look at your mechanic down the street that's roughly what they're billing out uh, there's a lot of different things that are getting you know go to your dentist how much do they charge but uh, well yeah, yeah. and you got to look at it in the terms of uh, the, your craftsmanship exactly um, how many hours a week you put into uh, perfecting your craft, not just detailing cars, but no. actually trying to train, trying to teach, trying to educate, trying to learn, yeah. making, uh, you know, going to clinics, you know, booking your travel to hit these events, to do this education, that all becomes an operating cost. Exactly. So you need to find out, you know, not only what you can do over the course of the year, Yeah. that needs to be factored in also into exactly. what your business is going to be trying to make. Cause if you're not making enough to be able to do this stuff, no, you're never going to be able to grow. Exactly. But at the same time, if you don't ever grow and you can't make that work, you're going to get stuck at a certain point where you're not going to be able to push yourself above a certain income bracket. Exactly. And you know, a lot of people are concerned uh, that I can't charge that much. Yes, you can. It's if you have the mindset for it, if you have the efficiency to do it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you have to gain that efficiency. And it's not necessarily by raising your prices that you can get to that $100 an hour. You can do so by increasing your efficiency. Yeah. But how do you calculate what your actual cost is? And I've come up with a weird little formula. I've been teaching it for years. And I've had detailers almost break down and cry when they do this formula because they realize that this is why I don't have any money in the bank. Yeah. Uh, because I'm you know, working for $40 an hour, but it actually cost me $60 an hour to run my shop. Right. So 
the first thing, you know, there's a list of items that you need to go over. One of them, your rent, your mortgage, whatever. And preferably you have a mortgage instead of rent. If you can afford to buy a shop, by all means, you're investing in your future. Unfortunately, detailing businesses do not have a great resale value. Yeah. So if you can invest in real estate at the same time, then your business, when it's time to exit, uh, you know, the closer you get to my age, the more you start thinking about an exit strategy. But you, the, your younger guys, you should be thinking about an exit strategy as well. So your rent, your mortgage, that's, so that's the first one. First rent one. Mortgage. And for mobile detailers, you've got a cost as well, and we'll get to that later. You don't have the rent and the mortgage, but you've got other things to worry about. Taxes. We have business taxes. We have income taxes for your business, not your personal income tax, but your business taxes. And you have property taxes. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that need to be figured out. And put it down as a yearly number. So how much does it cost you per year? Yeah, so your mortgage for the year, your taxes yeah. for the year. Exactly. Your utilities. We all have utilities. You yeah. have electricity, you have water, you have gas, uh, you have oil for heating, you have a number Whatever, of different yeah. utilities, whatever, whichever ones you happen to be using. Sewer costs, etc. Communication. We have phones, yep. we have internet. Uh, some people have landlines, some people just have cell phone lines. Bundle them all in there, get all that together. Some people have cable in their shops. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> they want to watch TV and yeah, not work, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> insurance. Now, insurance is a big thing. Yep. Uh, you need insurance. To be a, a legitimate business owning, you know, business owner detailer, you need proper insurance. Yeah. And be covered for what you're doing as well. If you have a $500,000 in your car in your shop and you only have $200,000 in insurance and something happens, like your shop burns down, guess what? You have zero coverage. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I've had, I, so I had a shop, or yeah. in my shop, my building, the ceiling was old. Yeah. And it, the uh, guy who built the building, not the current landlord, but the right. guy who built the building, had just sprayed uh, a, um, basically an asbestos style uh, insulation yeah. that you would spray on like a uh, I-beam. Right but they sprayed that on the ceiling yeah, and used that for insulation on the metal roof. Right. But they never covered that. Right. So by the time I got into the building and had been utilizing the building and working with the building, yeah. uh, more and more small pieces would just fall right. from, the, from the ceiling. And they were, they were basically a, f a fiberglass concrete is yeah. what they were. And one morning I had a new Porsche 911 sitting in the shop yeah. And a gentleman's 55 Chevy pickup sitting in the shop, uh, both sitting in there. Yeah. And I remember I walked in and that morning dead center in the middle of the shop on either side of each of those cars was a hunk about the size of this table. Ouch. That had fallen. Thankfully it didn't hit either car. Yeah. And it had fallen just straight down. But that day I called the landlord and said, we need to fix this roof because this is insane. Yeah. Took a ton of photos of it. I sent him to him and the next day he literally had called another insulation company to come in and actually put in proper insulation and yeah. vinyl wrap the whole ceiling. Right. Which Protect, ended up yeah. brightening up the shop too. So it was an added benefit. I had a nice white ceiling now exactly. in my garage. But uh, that was just something that you never know. No. It was just, you know, I'd been in the shop three years and one day I walked in and yeah. there it was. Yeah. So, it can happen to anybody. And then on top of that, employees and accidents. They, yeah. They're called accidents because they happen on accident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Nobody comes into work in the morning saying, I'm going to screw up a car today. I'm going to smash <laughs> this door into this door pole, pole or yeah, I'm going to no. hit this. Like, or at least you hope they don't. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you have to figure in is your marketing costs. Yeah. So people know where you are and they can keep coming to you. Exactly. That's kind of important. And you know, your marketing costs, you've got Facebook, you've got Google AdWords. If you're in a smaller community, radio works, uh, television, and um, newsprint. Yeah, and maybe so you've works. wrapped your vehicle, maybe you've yeah, got exactly. your signage for your business, maybe you're doing flyers or pamphlets yeah, or any exactly. of that kind of stuff. All of that bundles into there. Wages for your employees. Now, all in, not just their per hour, but uh, depending on where you are, you're gonna have taxes to pay, you're gonna have co-pays on different things. So figure all of that in. Uh, they're, they're, uh, benefits, if yeah. you have benefits, things like that. So that all has to be figured in. Your supplies, how much does it cost you per year? Yeah. 
And just, What's your chemical cost? Yeah. What are you buying from the guy on the truck that shows up? What are you buying from all the different groups and websites? What are you buying from us? Yeah, you know, <laughs> Amazon, uh, what are you buying online, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. How many towels are you going through, really? <laughs> we have a business program. You can sign yeah. up at theragcompany.com. Exactly, <laughs> to cut those costs. <laughs> maintenance, now maintenance is your vehicle maintenance, your shop maintenance, well, your- Tool maintenance. Tool maintenance, exactly. I mean, so, a lot of guys don't think they need, they, they maybe they have an army of polishers yeah but what they don't realize is they need brushes they need brushes they need cords to they need switches. handle all that stuff yeah. yeah and the worst part is when you have a machine you're in the middle of the process working on a car and it yeah. stops working yeah. and you have none yeah. of those things exactly. to fix it or be you able to fix it on the fly yeah. yeah or you don't have a spare to be a backup or maybe your air compressor i had an air compressor throw a rod yeah on the block of the air compressor air compressor was done yeah i couldn't use air for the rest of the day Oh, you know, I had to, I, yeah. thankfully though, I had a backup air compressor that yep. was a much smaller, uh, just as, you know, I got it at Harbor Freight. It worked great for emergencies mm -hmm. yes, for like one or two days while the air compressor was down, but it wouldn't last in the no. shop. So, uh, yeah, we'd always have, think about those kind of things. You need to have backups for that, or you need to have, you need to spend the money to take care of all your equipment. Yeah. Maybe you pay, I had a pressure washer they do tune-ups on it. Exactly. You know, it was a diesel-fired pressure washer, yep. and I'd pay them to come in every six months, three months, exactly. change the oil and, and service it. Exactly. Uh, one, to keep up with the warranty on it, but also because it was fat, they were faster and quicker yeah. to get it done. And maintenance always costs less than a repair. Yes, much, much less. Yeah. So vehicle costs. Uh, if you're running a shop, you might have loaner vehicles. You'll have a, a shop truck, hopefully. No. We always like to have a shop truck. Uh, if you're a mobile, now this is where it gets a little touchy for a mobile detailer. Even though you might have a 1992 Chevy van that you're driving around in, when you're figuring this cost out, go to the dealership, figure out how much it would cost you to lease or buy a brand new vehicle, how much per month, and figure that into your cost. Because eventually you're going to have to replace well, and that classic G30 van. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually you're going to want a new van. Exactly. You're going yeah. to spend enough time in that old van that you're going to want and need yeah. that. And who knows, your company may grow big enough that it's you're gonna almost... You're going to need more than one. You're going to need more than one. Or it gets to a point where uh, maybe that old van is, even though you keep it nice, yep. you know, it's just going to get to a point where it's not going to be economical exactly. to keep up on it. Yeah. And then tools. Now, tools, not chemical costs, but your brushes, your, uh, your polishers, your steamers, your extractors, your lights, uh, yep. everything like that. Figure that in and give yourself a yearly budget for that. Just because you have a polisher doesn't mean you shouldn't have a backup. Yeah. Just because you have a steamer doesn't mean you shouldn't have well, a backup. And, and lifts and all sorts of fun well, stuff. And on a, yeah, and that's the thing. You want to have fun with it. Yeah. And you want to be not go all out and go crazy, but no. grow the grow the tool list and give yourself, like you said, that buffer. Yeah. So a buffer, yeah. pardon the pun, but you can uh, be able to get something that you want. Because exactly. who's not to say if you go to SEMA and you see a polisher or a machine or a light or a jack or something that you want yeah. in your it's shop. Like, it's like, wow, that's neat. And you go and you factor that in for the year, like, oh, I've got this much money to spend on new equipment for the shop. Yeah then you can treat yourself and treat the shop to having that and yeah. make your life easier and hopefully more profitable because you have that. Right. So it, it, it's all going to help to have that. An old saying my dad always said was, uh, before you start a job, budget in a tool. And he meant for around the house. So if I yeah. was building a fence, he said, build into the cost of when you're building, figuring out the fence cost. Get yourself a new power get tool. Get yourself a new power tool to put into that, one yeah. that you don't have yet. So when I, I needed a skill saw, yeah. And when I built my fence, I bought myself a skill saw. When I built a playhouse, I bought myself a sawzall right. and some impact gun, impact yeah. drivers. And, and it all, you know, and now I have all that stuff. Right. And I got all those projects accomplished. Exactly. But now I have these tools so that I can keep using them. And yeah. same thing with detailing, you know, factor that kind of thing in. You can never have too many polishers. No, you can't. Or lights. Or Definitely lights. lights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, education. Now, this is something that a lot of people go, ah, I know what I'm doing. You never know what you're doing. The person that says, I know it all, they're ready for retirement. Oh yeah. Yeah, or they just started, one of the two. But uh, education, and education is going to trade shows. So you have to budget in a flight, you have to budget in hotels, you have to put that in your budget, please. 
it's amazing the energy you get from going to trade shows. It's amazing the education you get. Yeah, because it, in reality, my you know detailing cars is a very monotonous job. Uh, for those of us that can handle it and have been in it a long time, uh, it's nice. It's a nice break. Yeah. It's a nice work field trip, so to speak, to be able to attend these event these events like yeah. SEMA or Mobile Tech or uh, you know even some of the smaller you know take. Like we went and did a thing at, at Detailer's Domain back right. east, and it was a fun weekend. Exactly. But it was a trip where we got to go, we got to learn, there was other companies there, yeah. and we just got to spend that time together. You and know? a lot of manufacturers put on training sessions. You can never go to enough training sessions. Yeah, and you don't have to, like we're saying, you don't have to go all the way to Las Vegas or to, to Orlando to do this. Perhaps there's a guy in your area or maybe one state away. Yeah. You know, we had an event here last weekend. We had folks from Washington, from Oregon, because uh, we're based here in Idaho, yeah. uh, just come up and spend the weekend. They brought their wives, their children, yeah. and the wives and children went to go do something, and they spent Saturday here with us yeah. learning. Or if your budget's really good, come and visit us at Wax Talk next year in the yeah, UK. Yeah, that's yeah. even more fun. Yeah. But the goal of that is that that way you can, you can meet, you can congregate, you can talk with others, maybe you can see demo, play with some tools, some equipment, and some things learn. that maybe you were wondering about, but, but you can learn. And, yeah. and whether you learn from the trainers that are teaching it or you learn from the other people that attend, uh, that whole networking, all of that's good. Yeah. And all of it kind of refreshes you and gives you a bunch of new ideas. So maybe on that drive home, Afterwards, you can come up with a bunch of great ideas that you want to implement or utilize in your shop. I learn from every class I teach. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now take a subtotal of that. Put that number aside, whatever that number is. Next, your wage. Now, as business owners, as detailers, we see all these BMWs, Mercedes, mm -hmm. cars coming in. Maybe <laughs> Hyundai Elantras. Yeah. Well, you know. Those are the high-end cars. Well, the, yeah. the 06 Hyundai Elantra, <laughs> yeah. is a, it's a rare beast. The high-performance model, silver, yeah. The silver <laughs> streak Hyundai yeah. Elantra. <laughs> but most of the people bringing those cars in, what are they in life? They're small business owners. How come you as a detailer can't afford that brand new BMW that the IT guy can afford or that the owner of the restaurant has that has that beautiful 2018 F350 pulling his yeah, RV. RV. Yeah. yeah, he owns a restaurant. You own a detailing shop. What's the difference? You should both be able to afford that. So give yourself a living wage, and I say a minimum wage for a business owner should be a hundred thousand a year. Mm -hmm. Now people, are like, ah, no, put it down. And those are saying, yeah, but I pull like fifty thousand cash out of my business. Never do that. Pulling cash out of your business devalues your business yeah. immensely. Just Put it all on the, on the books. The other thing you want to do once you have your owner wage is your retirement savings. You want to put money away for your retirement. Believe it or not, your business, when you go to sell it, probably won't be worth much. Yeah, a lot of them aren't. No, detailing businesses are worth as much as the inventory is worth and the tools. Your client base is not really worth that much. So unless you've built up phenomenal branding 10 locations, things like that, you're not looking at a, a big number. Yeah, you might get 10, 20, 30,000 out of it, but it's not your retirement fund. So build up your retirement fund and have your company pay for your retirement fund mm -hmm. as you're growing. So that should be part of your hourly cost as well. Yeah, so smart. So another subtotal added to the other one. Now, you take that number and multiply it by 1.3 because you need profits. If you don't have profits, you are not in business. Yeah. Profits are an essential part of customer service. If you don't have profits, you will not be around to serve your customers the next time they need you. You'll also be really grumpy. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you won't have any money. Right. So don't expect profits to be something that's left over. Calculate them in before you even start. Yeah, and, and that was something that worked with me really well was uh, I calculated that in every, every month or every year. I knew exactly where we had to be, and then I gave myself a buffer right. of every month and said, this is, this is my break-even point. Yeah. But my break-even point included Rooted. the profit. Yeah. So that no matter what, we always had extra money, yeah. and then anything past that break-even point was pure profit. Exactly. It was money, like all of these 
you know, numbers had already been met, everything had already been established, yeah. and then that, yeah. that was the break even, but it already included the profit. Exactly. And that made, that made those lean months very easy to swallow and handle because yeah. you could go back and you go like, well, we're still making money. Like we're making money. Yes, we're yeah. not pulling in tons right. of cash. We're not, oh my gosh, we're, you know, doubled our sales this month. Like, exactly. you know, we still made enough that everybody could make it through the winter. Everybody had a good Christmas. Yeah. You know, my guys' families were taken care of and they were happy. Exactly. Uh, you know, nobody had to get laid off during no. the winter, you know, cause we still had enough work to carry us through and work yeah. in, in a good amount. But the key is adding that profit in before you break even, cause it just makes the, life easier. Yeah, there's a book out there called Profits First, read it. Uh, but include that profit as part of your hourly cost. Mm -hmm. So once you have those three numbers, so the first total of all your actual costs, your wage and retirement savings, and then your profit, add that in. From there, divide that by 1,920. And where do I come up with 1,920? That's the number of hours, working hours there are in a year if you work five days a week, 40 hours a week, or five days a week, 40 hours a week. So good banker's hours, Monday through Friday, eight to five kind of deal. Exactly, and two weeks off. Nobody should work more than 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. It's an international standard. It's there for a reason. You need eight hours of work, eight hours of leisure, eight hours of sleep. Yep. That's your time. And you need the weekend off. These people that are, hey, I'm working through, I'm, after eight hours of work, you're not efficient anymore. No, that's no, when not. you make mistakes. Yeah, well, you get. That's when you hurt yourself. Well, we laugh. Like we used to do some of these videos. We'd go till the all hours of the evening. Yeah, yeah. And you'd get a little punchy. Yeah, exactly. You get a little sloppy after a while. Uh, you start slurring your speech, and and you don't realize it, but it's just because you've been up, running for so long. Exactly. And detailers can do the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, there's only so much time, especially the strain on your eyes, the strain on your brain. Yeah. When you're staring, you maybe got your headlamp on and you're staring at the reflection yeah. of the light back into your eyes. That takes a lot out of you. Exactly, it does. So that 1920 number is per technician working. So if you're a, a shop owner that has five employees and you're not out on the floor, so if you have five bays, then you divide 19, 1920 times five divided by your end number. Yeah. And that will give you how much you have to charge per hour minimum. Then look at the packages you're selling. If you're selling a package, let's say a, a quick interior exterior package for $99, and it takes your guys two hours to do, but your number at the end of this is $65 an hour, then you're losing $30 on every one of those jobs. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprising. Yes. When you do have that, and once you can figure out that number, then you can dictate the whole entire business exactly. on that number. We had that number at my shop, and when I would calculate, and yeah. we were under that number by five cents, yeah. it, was, it was a little bit of, yeah, but it, yeah. other time, or if we missed that number by five cents, it yeah. was like, whoa, 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 what happened this yeah. week for us to lose five cents on every single car? Exactly. How did we lose a nickel on every single car? We could probably find that on the ground, guys, yeah. like out of, or just out of change out of people's cars. Like how, how, Yeah. you know? And that's when you can go back, you can make yourself more efficient because you can find out maybe one of those guys, Yeah. one of your employees took a lot of smoke breaks. Wasn't pulling his weight. And just wasn't pulling his weight. Had a bad week. Or had a bad week and just couldn't get enough cars out or couldn't get you yeah. know, if he had gotten three more cars out that week or, yeah. or cumulatively the group could have gotten two or three more cars out, it would have made yeah. up for it or even half a car. Exactly. You know, so there's little things that you can you is this allows you to hyper focus and actually check out the inner workings of your business. A lot of people yeah. look at this and go like, oh, man, that's just so much, so much work, man. I just, you know, I do the sales and I get my money and I pay my guys and we're good. Yeah. But 
it'll make you a better businessman when you can figure all that out. Because if you watch any of those TV shows where people's businesses are going in the toilet, yeah. and you get Gordon Ramsay or you get those guys that come in, even the bar rescue, those guys that come in yeah. to try and save the business, the number one question they ask is, what is your numbers? Yeah. Like, what are your numbers? How much does it cost you to do this? What's your average ticket price per customer? Exactly. And they always go, well, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Well, no wonder, yeah. you know? And by the end of it, after he's figured everything out and he's explained it to everybody, then they go, oh, I know my number. Yeah, it's this, I've got it. This yeah. is it, this is, you know. This is what I need to do. Yeah. And for the mobile detailers, you guys don't have rent, but what you have is loss in equity. So, or loss, uh, not in equity, sorry. My, my brain is not working at the moment. <laughs> uh, everybody has a cost, so we have, all these upfront costs, yeah. you guys have a loss. And that loss is your time. So if you leave your driveway at eight o'clock in the morning and plan to be back at five o'clock in the afternoon, how much time have you lost in that day that you're not working? You're driving from point A to point B. Right. So that time has to be figured in. How much are you spending in traffic? Now you say, well, I get up at six and I, I get to my first job at eight and I leave the last job at five and I get back home at seven o'clock. Well, no, you're not working the 40 hours. Condense that to 40 hours. So from the five, time. six hours of driving that you've yeah. accumulated. So your overhead is calculated in losses. It's not calculated in upfront money. So you the shop-based owners have upfront costs. Those are my rent, my utilities. They know those numbers. You have a variable loss every month. How many days did it rain? How many days did it snow? Yeah. How many days was it too hot to work? Yeah. Yeah. All those are big, big things that guys got to understand and figure out. The other thing I think that one thing we didn't talk is, is just your health. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, guys need to understand that you can work those 40 hours a week. You can work 60, you can work 80. We're not telling you not to. We're just telling you that you're going to be less profitable and less happy yeah. if you're working that much because you're just not gonna have time for all the great things in your life. No. You wanna, maybe you wanna buy a boat, maybe you wanna buy a camper trailer, maybe you've got kids, maybe you wanna attend their football, their soccer games, their exactly. sporting events. If you're gonna be working that much, you're not gonna have time to do those things. And so one thing you need to do is calculate to be able to take time yeah. to spend with your family, but also take time for yourself. Go Balance. get a massage, yeah. get, go to see the chiropractor, you know, take some time with your body because your body is what is actually making you uh, all this livelihood. You know, for me, I didn't do that. No. I've got a lot of arthritis in my, in my shoulders and hands and elbows yeah. and it is painful. For me, it's my lower back. So, yeah, and yeah. so there's parts that on everybody, it's gonna be different and it is, uh, it's also gonna hit you at a point for the younger guys, feel like you're golden, you're awesome. Oh yeah. But as you get older, it's gonna be harder and harder. You're gonna get a little slower and a little slower. You're gonna be picking and choosing. And yes, you're gonna go, oh, it's the natural tide of things. I've got employees, I'm gonna run the business. That's fine, but you also need to be able to take care of yourself and make sure that your body is yeah. still good. Because whether you're gonna slow down on your detailing and let other guys handle it and run it for you, you still don't wanna be crippled, no, basically, exactly. that you can't enjoy that time running your business no. or attending the trainings or attending SEMA or going to this stuff because it's just too painful. Yeah, I feel better at 50 than I did at 30. But at 30, I was working 80 hours a week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I yeah. don't feel that way. I feel worse at 38 than I yeah. did at 30. But <laughs> uh, got another 12 years. We took yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so all good, good information to uh, check out. You guys can uh, email Ivan at Ivan at Opticote.com. Correct. With a Y. Ivan y with a y. V -A -N, yeah. And uh, make sure you check them out on Facebook, Instagram. And uh, Ivan, thank you for coming. In. Thank you. Dropping some knowledge bombs. And be sure to check out The Rag Company on That's Instagram, right. on Facebook. And you can subscribe. Yep. You can like. You can share. Please yep. share. And please comment below yeah. any of your other tips, your tricks, or anything that you guys also want to see. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned right here on the Rag Company YouTube channel.